Next up, we have Syke, known only as Syke. Thank you. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. He is a returning speaker to the 21 convention. He was an attendee in 2008. Came back in 2009, <laughs> gave a great speech. And he actually just spoke in Stockholm at our first Euro European convention. One of the few speakers to do both back to back. Mm -hmm. He's uh, one of the best coaches around, and it's awesome to have him here. Thanks for coming, man. Kick some butt. Awesome. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Man, yeah, I mean, it's been a wild ride. I got to do the uh, Stockholm 21 convention where I talked about my VI system and, you know, what I teach for guys to get good. This speech, though, is looking a little bit different. This is how to get good. This is the stuff I had to implement myself uh, from, the get, from the very start to now. A lot of speakers here were talking about all kinds of great stuff, talking about uh, ways to implement stuff in the field. By the way, I actually, I actually want to say something. It's so cool seeing a room full of all faces I know. <laughs> That's one cool thing about this convention, that I don't think there's anyone here I haven't actually personally uh, worked with and talked to, you know? But um, I want to give you guys something on how to get good. Because when I first started this, I had to come up with a plan. I had to come up with a system that would allow myself to implement all the stuff that's out there, because there's a lot. There's a lot of different things that you guys are going to be hearing about and learning about, and it's going to clog your head a lot. You know? And you have to have a, a progression, a steady type of progression. So I want to show you guys what that looks like. Now, to do that, I want to show you guys where I came from. <laughs> this was me, yeah. <laughs> this was me uh, four years, thank you, thank you. This was me four years ago. I don't know how bad you guys think you are, but if you weren't playing Magic Gathering every single weekend by yourself in your mom's basement, you weren't as dorky as me. If you cannot have an intelligent debate on who would win in a battle, the Avengers or the X-Men, you're not as dorky as me. If you do not know all the names of Han Solo and Leia Solo's kids, and Luke Skywalker's kids, Ben Skywalker, <laughs> uh, you're not as dorky as I am. I, was used, uh, you know, I still got a little bit of a Buddha belly on me, but I used to be 35 pounds heavier. I could not talk to anyone. I had two friends from high school. I mean, I, it was bad when I got into this. By no, I mean, some of you guys talk about coming into this as a natural. I was not a natural. I never have done a code approach. I don't think the, the concept was just foreign to me. The whole idea was just ridiculous. The only way I could talk to girls was if I met them basically online, right? <clears throat> so when I, and, I, and I talk about this in my previous speech I did last year, like a lot about you know, my progression and whatnot. Uh, however, that did change. The fact that I'm here shows that this kind of thing changed. A lot of you guys have seen me in field. You've seen me do some stuff yourselves. You've seen me coaching you and, and you implementing some of this stuff uh, by yourself. I had to go out time and time again to make that happen. And afterwards, uh, some, some of this stuff has blown my mind. Being a dating coach for the MTV show Made, uh, getting the best new POA award in 2008, or re just recently, the best natural game, which blew my mind again. Because, like I said, I was, nothing, I was definitely not a natural, right? Which reinforces again that a natural is not something you're born with. A natural is just a guy that's progressively figured this stuff out. Any one of you can become a natural. There's, there's not any crazy thing to it. It's just going out there and getting this stuff. Um, more importantly, uh, some other stuff, I used to uh, formerly work with AFC Adam Lines and POA training. Those are my roots. And now I'm with uh, Psycho Game. That's my own website. You can look me up there, right? But since, I mean, from this guy to this guy, it was a crazy journey. <laughs> it was a crazy journey. I've had some of the best nights in my life, and I've had some of the worst nights in my life. Um, I've done st I'm not one to talk about sexual exploits, especially on camera, so I'm not going to get into some of the crazy stuff I've done. Um, some of the amazing shit that even to this day I just think like really <laughs> like that just really happened <laughs> But I will show I will share with you guys a bad moment in my life a bad time of learning this I remember one point uh, About a year into my progression. I was gaming this girl 
and I was doing everything right. Everything this community told me to do, I was doing it correctly. I had the social proof, I had guys giving me drinks, I befriended her friend, I got her away, she was all into me, everything was, like this was meant to happen, logistics were perfect, she was coming back to my place, it was already set up, everything was perfect. She was a nine, she, literally she was a nine. She was a gorgeous girl, just my type, right? And I'm thinking, done deal. This is game. I was on cloud nine, right? I take this girl and I take her to an Irish pub. And in the Irish pub, there's, a, there's some uh, band on stage and a lead singer of the band looks at the girl and he's like, hmm. So he points to himself, he points to her, and he points down. She immediately turns to me and she goes, I think I know that guy. Uh-oh. <laughs> so she runs off and she starts going to talk to him. I lose her. 10 minutes, I, have, I do not see where they are. I go outside to find this girl, and then I see her and him walking away arm in arm. Just 10 minutes. I was giving her for the last two hours, and very well, mind you. Right? I followed them because I wanted to see where this was going. And he led her into his car, and within five minutes, the car started rocking. I was crushed. I actually wrote up a whole post, and I sent it to every guru I could find, because keep in mind, I was still uh, learning in this phase. I wasn't an instructor just yet. I wrote it to every single guy I knew, and the title of it was, What's Wrong With Me That Can't Be Fixed? Because I did everything correctly. And I remember at the end of that night, I just sat on a bench trying to figure out what, where I did wrong, because I knew I did everything properly. I did everything according to the book. And when I realized that, I realized that that just has to tell me there's something wrong with just me. It's not, you know, if this works for other people, then something's just inherently wrong with me. And I just started crying. And it was the big, it was, at, at that moment, I have never felt more hopeless in my life. And on top of that, it started raining. <laughs> so I want you to picture that. Me, just sitting on a bench, bawling, getting rained on, right after this just happened. Most guys here will talk about the, the most crazy successes, the, the you know, for some on with a nun or some, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> like the most crazy you know, stories, no, no, uh, you know, whatever. But it's important for you guys to hear the other side of it. I want you guys to hear the time where I didn't get the girl, where it was not the most beautiful thing ever, right? Because you're gonna go through that. But you know what? It's all worth it. Because I've had those moments, those crazy, you know, similar things to that, where it was just like, this is uh, surreal. And to me, the juice is worth the squeeze. And that's a huge question you're going to have to ask yourselves when you're going through this, because it's going to get frustrating. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be tough like going day after day trying to implement this stuff, right? But I want to help you make that as small a time as possible. I want to help you with that learning process. The problem, though, is you have bad odds. 97% uh, of guys would never truly become good at this. Uh, I actually saw Fuji, you know, uh, say something. Someone said 95% of guys. So maybe me and him can meet eye to eye and just say 96, whatever. But point is, this is a really uh, well-known thing in this community. 97% of guys will never truly become good at this. What that means is that this lucky bastard right here is going to become amazing and screw the rest of you. <laughs> only him, no one else. He's like, <laughs> hey, only him. All of you are going to fail. That's what that means. As much as you think, you're like, oh, well, you know, we're all improving. You're going to all improve. I don't think anyone comes into this and doesn't get some kind of improvement out of it. It might be small, it might be big, but there's going to be some improvement. But only 97% of guys uh, truly feel like, yeah, I just got this handled. This is awesome. So you have to come into this realizing it is bad odds. It, it's worse than trying to bankrupt Vegas. <laughs> However, there is that 3%. Right? There, is, there are guys who do do this. It might not be the best odds, but there are those guys out there. So this whole talk, what I want to do for you guys is show you how you can become part of that 3%. And I'm going to teach you the stuff that I had to implement from day one. These were things I did from the very first month of getting into this, when I didn't really know game. I was just figuring it all out. But I remember doing these things, and I want you to start implementing them yourself. So how to beat the odds. In my experience, there were five key things that put me in the 3%. The first one, anyone can talk about. Anyone worth a damn will mention this and let you guys know this is important, and that's practice. But there's a lot of stuff that people don't mention with practice that I'm going to get into. Number two is the basics, keeping them sharp 
and never letting those go faulty, ever. Number three is purpose. Understanding the purpose of why we do the things we're doing, other than just reading stuff and going, okay, well, something told me to do it. Number four is leading. Leading the set to where we need to take it. Progressing it always. And number five is finding that mentor. Finding someone or to help guide you and show you the way. If you have these five things and you really focus on them, I can almost promise you, you will be in that 3%. Because a lot of people might get three, might get four, but if you implement all five, that's all I really had. From day one, that's all I was focused on. So let's go into each one of these. Practicing. These are some quotes I found that I really like and that resonate with a lot of the problems I'm seeing in this community. When you are not practicing, remember someone somewhere is practicing, and when you meet him, he will win. That band guy knew his game. He knew, let me practice my guitar every day, and girls will want to get with me, right? All I got, all I, he knew his game is just, let me point to a girl, come to me, whatever it is, instantly escalate, right? He practiced, man. He probably practiced that guitar to be this shit and be that awesome you know, band guy all the time. Anything, he won. You're all out practicing right now, yeah? Is anyone here not practicing? Cool. But now I want you to look around. Actually, I want you guys to look around because all the rest of these guys are practicing also. Are they practicing more than you? If you met one of these other guys in a club and you're both going for the same girl, who would win? Now, obviously, the community, we, we want to you know, be there for each other, but there's other guys out there, there's naturals out there that are practicing right now while you're in this room, they're out there talking to girls. Any moment you're not practicing, you're not getting better at this, then someone else is. And when you find a girl, your dream girl, the girl that might become the mother of your children, do not let it happen where you lose the, her to some other guy. But you want to, because even if you put in that one extra hour of field work in, that's all it takes. Because you'll know that one extra little thing that will get her to go to him and not you. If that's not enough motivation for you to be out there doing this stuff, I don't know what is. It's not necessarily the amount of time you spend at practice that counts, it's what you put into the practice. What that means is I, see, I will see these guys, they'll go into the field, right? And they'll just think, as long as I'm in a club, I'm practicing right now. I'm getting field time, I'm getting field experience. No, you're not. You're just in a club. Practice means being in a set, talking to a girl. That's what that means. In fact, I want every, I'm going to give you all a challenge right now. Um, I, I, I get, I'm going to guess that a lot of you guys might think you practice a lot, right? And you probably say, maybe you'll say, I go out four hours a night. I practice four hours each night. Maybe that's a lot to you, maybe that's a little to you, whatever, it is. I don't know. But let's say you go out and practice four hours each night. I'm going to give you a challenge. I want you to go out and I want you to get a stopwatch, all right? And every time you go into a set, click your little stopwatch. Every time you're done talking to the girl, click it again. And you do not stop uh, that night until that clock watch at four hours. I guarantee you're going to realize, man, this is a lot more practice than I used to be doing. <laughs> it's going to be a lot more. You want four hours of practice? That's what that means. You get your stopwatch and you spend four hours in set. Any in between time does not count. Hunting around is not practice. All right. Practice without improvement is meaningless. Another huge common mistake I keep seeing. A lot of, I know a lot of guys who are approach machines. They, they will run more sets than I, than I will. They'll, they'll be nonstop practicing, but there's no improvement. It's, they're just doing the same stuff over and over and over. And in the wise words of Albert Einstein, those who do the same thing over and over expecting different results, that's the definition of insanity. So when I practice, I'm always looking at what I did right, what I did wrong. What can I take away from this? What can I experiment and change next time? I remember one time, no, I, I can't believe I'm saying this on camera. Um, <laughs> I remember one time, just for the hell of it, I approached a girl like this. <laughs> I had no idea why. I just wanted to experiment something. I, it came into my head, me and my, my boy Elevate were just like, let's do that one time. Let's see what happens. It didn't work, but the point is, I now know that for a fact, I, I experimented it. And the funny thing is, nine times out of ten, if you do something like that ten times, nine times out of ten, it won't work. It'll be just ridiculous, and it'll be of course. But that one time out of ten, 
that one time out of 10, you'll do something that you think, this is never gonna work, it's ridiculous. Like, how would this ever mean anything? And then it will, and you'll just, your mind will blow. I'm not doing it for those nine times out of 10. I'm doing it for the one time out of 10. I'm trying to find, I'm, trying to, I'm always experimenting, I'm always playing around with stuff. If you keep doing the same thing over and over, if, you, if your opener is the same thing every single time, and you still feel like you have a problem opening, change it.